A college sophomore finished her shift at the cafeteria and decided to go for a hike. She got dressed, said goodbye to her roommate, and hitchhiked a ride to the start of a trail. The 18-year-old girl met some hikers who were coming back and asked them for directions. It was getting dark, but the student pressed on, and she was never seen again. Her name was Paula Jean Weldon, and she went missing in 1946. She was walking along a trail near Bennington, a town in southwestern Vermont. The next day, her roommate reported her missing. The authorities quickly organized a search party. Hundreds of people searched the woodlands around the trail for four weeks. Her college even shut down for a while so students and faculty staff could join the search. They came back empty. The girl had disappeared into thin air. Paula didn't pack a bag. She didn't take any extra clothes or money. All the evidence suggested she didn't expect to be out for more than a couple of hours. Her father was a well-known industrial engineer. He blamed the county sheriff for poorly conducting the investigation. Despite all the efforts, the poor girl was still nowhere to be found. Her case remains unsolved to this day. But this is not the first time someone went missing in Vermont's forests. A year earlier, Mitty Rivers, a lively 74-year-old man, was the guide for a group of four hunters. He reached a fork in the road with his son-in-law. Mitty said he would walk a short distance down one of the paths. After all, he didn't want to miss lunchtime back at the camp. But that was the last time anyone had saw him. The group he had accompanied searched for the man all afternoon before calling the police. A more extensive search followed, but it didn't yield any results. The local man was an experienced hiker, and he was well familiar with the trail. Still, he had gone missing. Firefighters, volunteers, and even servicemen couldn't find the missing person after a month of searching. All that they found was a cartridge he dropped in a nearby stream. The local authorities still haven't solved the case. Nobody knew at the time, but Mitty and Paula were just the beginning. In just half a decade, five people in total disappeared in this part of Vermont. Years went by, but still nobody could explain their disappearances. And that's why the area got its name, the Bennington Triangle, after the famous Bermuda Triangle, where ships and planes have been disappearing for centuries. In 1949, the most puzzling disappearance happened in the Bennington Triangle. A 68-year-old veteran boarded a local bus. He was going home after visiting his relatives in St. Albans. His family took him to the bus station, and there were 14 witnesses who claimed he was still on it at the last stop before Bennington. But he never got off the bus there. His luggage was still on the rack, and an open bus timetable sat on his empty seat. The man had apparently vanished into thin air while on a moving bus. And there's another weird thing. He disappeared on the exact same date the college student went missing three years ago. The youngest person to mysteriously vanish was an eight-year-old. He was with his mother while she worked on the family farm. She went to feed the pigs and left her son alone for an hour or so. When she came back, the woman couldn't find her son. The locals soon formed search parties and the local sheriff brought in tracking dogs. They picked up the scent but lost it suddenly at a nearby crossroads. The guy was never found. Again, there was a strange element to this story. The youngster was wearing a bright red jacket. This would have made him more visible to the rescuers, but more strikingly, Paula. The college sophomore who disappeared four years earlier also had a red jacket. The final disappearance happened just 16 days after the little fella vanished from the farm. A 53-year-old woman was camping with her family in the Green Mountain National Forest. She went for a hike with her cousin, but there was a mishap. The woman fell into a stream. She decided to go back to the camp to change clothes. Her cousin thought she would join him later and continued along the path alone. But the woman never came back. In fact, she never reached their base camp. For two weeks, 300 searchers scouted the woods. They brought in helicopters but found no trace of the unfortunate woman. The last disappearance in the Bennington Triangle had an ending. Not a happy one, though. In the spring of the following year, the searchers found the poor camper three and a half miles from the original campsite. They had previously covered that spot, which made it only more mysterious. It was impossible to determine why and what happened to her. 
The only thing these five disappearances have in common is the period of time and the geographic area. 36 square miles of thick woods in the southwest of Vermont. This remote area of Green Mountains wasn't the happiest of places. Bennington and the nearby village of Glastonbury were founded as mining and logging towns. The living conditions were harsh. Near the end of the 19th century, the locals tried to rebrand the area as a tourist destination, but the mountain was unstable and a huge flood washed away their dreams of a happy life. Residents started moving out. In 2010, only eight people lived in Glastonbury. It became a ghost town. In the late 1940s, the area was back in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. But how could these disappearances have remained a mystery for so long? Surely someone had a reasonable explanation. One theory suggests that it was a case of foul play. Maybe an unknown person was up to no good and harmed the unsuspecting people. But then there would have been a pattern, and there is none. Or maybe the elements were responsible. The college student went missing on a pleasant day at the very beginning of winter. She was lightly dressed because it was 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside. But in the evening, the air temperature plummeted. It was a freezing 9 degrees Fahrenheit the following morning. In this part of Vermont, the weather is quite unpredictable. It can get really windy, especially in winter. Perhaps the bad weather and the dense forest confused the missing people. Recently, a strikingly similar case of disappearance happened here. A college student got lost in heavy fog at the top of Glastonbury Mountain. When he didn't return home, his fiancée called the police. State troopers immediately went out to look for him, but it was too dark and foggy to see anything. Luckily, they found him the next morning. He got lost because of the thick fog. He managed to find his way back to the trail only after the weather conditions improved. This story had a happy ending, but could this incident explain what happened to the people who disappeared over 70 years ago? The mountains around Bennington are full of abandoned mine shafts, a reminder of the town's history. A hiker lost in fog could easily fall into one of these wells. They could have no way of getting out. The area is so remote that no one would ever find them. The second danger are wild animals. Black bears are native to New England. Local hiking clubs advise visitors to store their food in special boxes, not to attract bears. The Green Mountain National Forest sits in the middle of the Bennington Triangle. Today, this popular recreation area is within a day's drive of 70 million people. People come here to camp, hike, and ride mountain bikes. But do all of them know about the five mysterious disappearances? I guess I wouldn't dare venture into this remote patch of Vermont's wilderness now. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.